about Najee Harris. Some people are upset about the fact that you drafted a running back in the first round. You look at Saquon Barkley, Christian McCaffrey, Josh Jacobs. Usually if you draft a running back in the first round, they're, they end up not just being, you know, a good running back, but really good, you know. I think Saquon's an elite running back, and I think that, you know, Josh Jacobs is up there too, you know. Even even Christian McCaffrey, arguably the best running back in all football. So did you agree with the Steelers fin- spending a first-round pick on Najee Harris? What are his strengths, you know, and how do you see him being implemented in the Pittsburgh Steelers offense going forward? What's his ceiling? I had the Steelers taking Najee Harris in the first round if he was available in every single mock draft. The thing is, I just didn't think he was going to be available in every single mock draft. I thought Miami was going to scoop him up. Wait, wait, wait about, didn't, didn't the Jaguars take ETN before you guys took They um, took him after. Okay, okay. But go ahead, go ahead. I just wanted to make sure. Go ahead. So when you look at Najee Harris, like I wasn't mad about like people like, oh, you should drop off the oh, I'm like, bro, listen. People have to understand that Kevin Colbert has been a general manager in Pittsburgh for two days de- since 2000. For my, money, for-, for my money, he's the best general manager in football. I'm- I tell you, he's the second best behind Belichick. Yeah, Belichick gets by with his. Can't coaching. argue with two. You can't argue with six rings. But Belichick gets by with his coaching, though. Like if you take the coaching part away from Belichick and you just specifically look at him as a GM. If you if you put him on a different team, it's a little different story. And you take away his coaching powers, you know. I think that but, he's not quite as good as a Kevin Colbert, but go ahead, you know. I definitely understand that, but I think part of that is being able to get players that best suit your system. And for Pittsburgh, you know, they get players that best suit their system, which is why you always see players who elevate. Like, this is the common – you see, what happens when players leave New England? Most of them, you never really hear about them. And they what happens? They always end up back. Calvin Noy went to the Dolphins last year. Guess where he's at? Back with the Patriots. You get what I'm saying? Hat because, like, Bill Belichick finds great players for his system. Same thing for Kevin Colbert. Same thing with Kevin Colbert. A lot of players that leave Pittsburgh, you don't really hear about them again. San Antonio Holmes, for example, you know, didn't really hear that much about him. Mike Wallace actually went to a Pro Bowl. Didn't really hear that much about him. So when you look at Najee Harris, Okay, despite despite the fact that Steelers drafted him and not an offensive lineman in that round, I mean, like, I trust Kevin Colbert's judgment. A lot of people don't pay attention to, you know, the general manager and the organization's history. They just say, oh, well, they need this, they need that. A lot of people don't understand, you know, the front office people and how they perceive things. A lot of people don't learn to trust the front office. You get what I'm saying? Stiller fans understand that, you know, yeah, we need offensive linemen, but the front office knows what they're doing. So when you look at Najee Harris, what makes him so great is, like, he's the closest thing that we will ever get to Le'Veon Bell. You look at what Le'Veon Bell did during his time in Pittsburgh. He was patient. He waited for the blocks to develop. He had good hands out the backfield. You could line him up as another wide receiver. Najee Harris has a similar skill set. Now, he doesn't have the receiver ability that Le'Veon Bell had. You know, he's pretty good, but Le'Veon Bell could have been your second best wide receiver, depending on what kind of team you were because of how good of a route runner he was, basically. But when you look at Najee Harris, he's like really close and really identical to the same skill set that Le'Veon Bell has, and he's going to be really good. The Steelers making it to the playoffs this year is going to depend on how how much success he has this year. Take it or leave it. Najee Harris, 2021 Rookie of the Year, offensive rookie there, obviously. I'm gonna take it. I actually may. I, I'm I, taking I, it. I, I, that's my pick. If if the Steelers make it to the playoffs, he's winning Rookie of the Year. Now Trevor Lawrence probably could win it, you know, but. The only the only way I see him not winning it is if Chicago, um, and well, not even that. Well, if Justin Fields starts early enough in the season and he can't, like Devontae, Devontae Smith and Jamar Chase, they're going to be up there. I think. I, I don't think like for a receiver to win it, like you really have to have like oh a spectacular season. I don't think those guys going to have be in the conversation. Like if you're not, I, I think they work. will, but like. I think like I think the three main ones are probably going to be Trey Lance because it looks like he probably, depending on how he performs during preseason, he can end up being QB one. We already talked about that. Mm-hmm. So if he starts, I definitely could see him being in it. But I think it can come down to Trey Lance, um, Najee, and Trevor Lawrence. Maybe Matt Jones if he starts. But I definitely think that Najee is my pick to win it, simply for the fact that you know I think he's going to have a really big impact in determining you know if the Steelers makes the playoffs or not. 
Thank you so much for watching this video today. Please also note that the Juice Alert Sports Podcast is not just a YouTube channel. It is available on all podcasting platforms, including Spotify, Google Podcasts, iTunes, and Apple Podcasts. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this content with all your friends. This podcast is my favorite thing in the entire world right now. It is my passion. And I want more people to listen to this podcast. I really want this podcast to grow. Also, a fun fact about me is that I want to go into the sports broadcasting and media world once I graduate from the University of Toledo, a college in Northern Ohio. I am looking to become one of the next great sports broadcasters and analysts out in the world. And I potentially would like to start my own network if this podcast really truly grows. Or if I fall short of that goal, I would love to work for a big time network like ESPN or Fox Sports 1. I am open to all networks. So if you believe in my dreams and you see or hear my passion through the screen, be sure to tell all your friends about the Juice Alert Sports Podcast. Stay motivated, you guys. Have a God-blessed day, and I'm out.